So I just received my flex, took it out of the package and have my first watch out, something you need to be careful, make sure this doesn't happen to you. So what happened is I took the flex out of the package and the antenna cover, this little protector over here, came off of the connector. You might think that's completely normal, that's what it's supposed to do. Uh, but what I had found is that this is two pieces. And it's actually the protector as well as a seal. So this grommet is going to go over this. Make sure that stays on. When we go to put the antenna on, we need a nice tight seal so we don't get moisture down into the flex. So that's my first watch out. Be careful. So I got the antenna on it and as you can see it doesn't go all the way down against the case. So you got to make sure that that grommet's on there. So the second thing I noticed with this is uh, I like to use the quarter 20 mounts, screw them into a tree, put the camera on there. You're good to go. You don't have to worry about the straps getting cut, fraying over time. Uh, now what you're going to find with the flex is on the bottom there is no quarter 20 mount. It's on the back. So if you use the uh, style like I typically do, they kind of go you know, down, over, and then come up. Those aren't going to work on this. That would basically point it up towards the sky. So unless you're looking for birds, it's not the way you want to do it. Uh, so what you're going to need to do, go out, get a couple of the type that have the ball, the ball style, where you can rotate it to any angle. Uh, that way you'll be able to face this in the direction you want. So I talked a little bit about the back here how I don't like so much that the quarter 20 is on the back. Not the end of the world, but uh, minor inconvenience for the uh, setup I already have. Just need to buy a, a couple new holders. Uh, the one thing I, I do really, really like though, is that they've moved the external power jack here to a spot that's not by the latch anymore. Uh, what I used to find on my micros is that because where I'd put the cable through, uh, is would the cable would go through so what I used to find on my micros is right where the cable would go through, that's where the external power jack would come in. So there'd be times that I'd push that cable through there to lock it up, and I'd push the external power jack, that barrel plug, out just a little bit. And uh, come to find out that it, the, the external power was no longer being provided. So you know, I checked the pictures, everything was working, put the cable through there, locked it up, left, and you know check it a few hours later, and it's not checking in, it's not sending videos. So really really like the new location. So I just want to go over a few features here. Uh, it's got a new battery compartment. So it still takes eight double A's. You're going to want to use lithium. Uh, the nice thing about this, it's got a really nice feel when it goes back in, clicks into place. You should know it's in there. Uh, nicely seated and hopefully these ones won't have the problem where they're not making good contact. So the next thing you're going to notice is your battery level and your signal level. Uh, you have a format button right here. So while that light's on, the format's ongoing. You don't want to touch anything, turn anything off. Uh, you have your test. So we always say make sure you test it. You get your picture back before you leave it. That's going to make this considerably easier. Then obviously your on off switch. And you still do have your status light here. And I'll show you another nice feature. So with this camera, down here they tell you exactly what those lights mean. So uh, it'll tell you what this, the indicator light is trying to tell you and uh, make it considerably easier to troubleshoot issues when you're out in the field. Something else I found kind of interesting, uh, they must really believe in their format button right here on the front because it tells you do not remove the SD card. So I think their, their idea is you're going to put the SD card in there. You know, you've got to buy that separately. Uh, class 10, make sure it's class 10, put that in there, and then whenever you need to format it, do it here. One of the first things I was eager to test was if the Flexus resolution was actually going to be an improvement over the micros. I wanted to test the difference between the micro and the flex for all images they were able to send. So I devised an experiment that would allow me to test the actual resolution the units were able to capture. This test will make sure any software smoothing does little to create a better looking image without actually adding more detail. I took a post-it note and placed it on a wall 12 feet from the countertop. I placed each camera on top of the countertop in the exact same spot and triggered them. For both cameras, I set the image SD photo resolution within the app to high. 
This would make sure the highest resolution image was captured on the SD card. Note, this does not affect the quality of the images that's being transmitted over the cell network. I then had each send me their thumbnails. After that, I requested HD photos from both. Last, I pulled the images from the SD card. Oh yeah, and I also needed to get the HD video from the Flex and take a screenshot of that. After I had all these files, I was able to crop them down to just the post-it note and compare. To my surprise, the Flex's thumbnail seems to be almost as clear as the HD picture from the Micro. The HD photo and the HD video from the Flex both seem to be of the same quality, which was really quite good. Comparing these to the picture taken by my Samsung S21 FE, these pictures were almost as clear as that. The other thing I noticed was the HD images and the images on the camera showed little difference in their ability to show smaller letters. So while the Flex may say the resolution of the sensor is 33 megapixels, is clearly just software smoothing and not much of an improvement in terms of native resolution. All right, we're standing here in front of the test setup I have. So you can see I have a Flex on the bottom, have a micro on the top here. Uh, I've got two solar setups here. So that's not really a part of the test necessarily, but they are both running off of external power jacks. Uh, these here, this is the very first style I built. Not particularly great. Uh, in turn, well, it, it works really well, but it's flimsy, pretty easy to break if you don't, if you uh, aren't careful. This one up here is one of my newer style ones, and uh, considerably more robust. I've dropped these before. Not a problem at all. Nothing's going to break on them. But anyways. So I'm standing here, I have the flex on the bottom, the micro on the top, this is going to be the test setup. Uh, I've already got a couple pictures from them and just from the few I've got so far, you can see over here what it's facing, there's some shadows and some bright light and the flex is just so much better. I'll put those on the screen here. So I wanted to go over a few other issues I've observed, as well as give a final conclusion. Uh, so a few of these issues, uh, such as the GPS location is not being set in the app automatically. You cannot share videos in the app. Uh, the videos taken in the PM are being sorted as if they're from the AM, so it's difficult to find them. The month, day, year format does not work. So if you set that in the settings, you will still get on the info strip the international standard of date, month, year. When you request an HD video, the option does not disappear. So this means that you could request a video more than once and that would cost you for each request. And speaking of cost, that you get 20 videos for five US dollars, which actually isn't too bad considering that you only get 50 HD pictures, which are far smaller in size than the uh, videos. And these packages, I should note, are both reduced when you're part of the Insiders Club. The biggest drawback, however, is how they chose to implement their video strategy. When you set the camera to video mode, the camera records a video. It will then take a snapshot from the beginning, middle, and end of that video, and it will send these three files back to your phone where uh, a GIF will be created or a GIF. This means that three photos are being used uh, each time to create this GIF. So those three photos will come out of your photo package. Uh, this really feels like a method to try to drive users to buy uh, the picture packages and especially the unlimited package. There needs to be an option to allow a single picture and then request the video based on that one picture. So overall, am I happy with the camera? Would I buy another one? Well, actually I already have. The improved thumbnails that the Flex has compared to the Micro makes it worth the 60 to $70 premium, hands down.